All right, it's seven o'clock. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 7.30. I'm gonna call the uh, town meeting to order. This is a virtual town meeting done via Zoom. Um, this is the first one of these that we've done. So begging your indulgence, we'll, um, we'll get through this in um, hopefully a relatively orderly fashion. Um, I'm gonna ask the town clerk to read the town meeting public notice. Amy? Sure. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? I hope so. Yeah, okay. good. Warning, notice of special town meeting and referendum vote by voting machine, East Windsor, Connecticut. All electors and persons qualified to vote in town meetings of the town of East Windsor, Connecticut, the town are hereby warned and notified that the board of selectmen of the town are convening a special town meeting to be held via Zoom pursuant to the instructions set forth below at 7.30 p.m. on September 1st, 2020 for the following purpose. Item one, to elect a moderator. Item two, to consider and discuss, but not to vote on the ordinance establishing the town of East Windsor Broadbrook Fire Department. The full text of the ordinance approved by the Board of Selectmen and recommended to the special town meeting is available for review at the town clerk's office. All those persons qualified to vote in town meetings of the town are hereby further notified that pursuant to the Connecticut general statutes and the town charter, the Board of Selectmen have removed the above item number two on the call of this special town meeting for submission to the voters of the town who are qualified to vote at town meetings for yes or no vote by voting machine on the following question. Shall the town adopt the ordinance establishing the town of East Windsor Broadbrook Fire Department? Yes or no. The vote will be conducted at the town's two polling places during the hours between 6 o'clock a.m. and 8 o'clock p.m. on November 3rd, 2020. Dated at East Windsor, Connecticut, this 24th day of August 2020. East Windsor Board of Selectmen, Jason E. Bowser, First Selectman, Marie DeSousa, Deputy Selectman, Sarah Muska, Selectman, Alan Baker, Selectman, and Charlie Nordell, Selectman. Thank you, Amy. Yep. I am now going to read the statement of eligibility to vote. This is pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes sec Section 7-6. At any town meeting other than a regular or special town election or at any meeting of any fire, sewer, or school district or any other municipal subdivision of any town incorporated by any special act, any person who is an elector of such town may vote and any citizen of the United States over the age of 18 years or more who jointly or severally is liable to the town, district, or subdivision for taxes assessed against him on an assessment of not less than $1,000 on the last completed grand list of such town, district, or subdivision, or who would be so liable if not entitled to an exemption under Connecticut General Statutes, uh, subdivisions 17, 19, 22, 23, 25, 26, or section 12-81 may vote unless restricted by the provisions of any special act relating to such town, district, or subdivision. So that is who is eligible to vote. And we do have a registrar on the, the call, which is good. Um, the next item is the election of a moderator. That's item number one on the call. I nominate Jason Bowza as moderator, Sarah Muska, 25 Maple Avenue. Is there a second? Charlie Nordell will second that motion. Seven, Grandview Terrace. Are there any other nominations to come to, to come before the town meeting? Are there any other nominations? I move nominations be closed. Second. Is there a second? Motion made by Selectman Nordell, seconded by Selectman Muska to close nominations. Any discussion on the motion to close nominations? Seeing none, all in favor of closing nominations, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nominations are closed. Uh, the question on the table is the election of Jason Bowser as town moderator. 
any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, signify by saying no. So carried. Um, our next resolution or our next item is item number two. Is there a motion from the floor? Blackman Baker. I would um, to consider and discuss, but not to vote on the ordinance establishing the town of East Windsor Broadbrook Fire Department. Full text of the ordinance approved by the Board of Selectmen and recommended to this special town meeting is available for review at the town clerk's office. All those persons qualified to vote in town meetings of the town are hereby further notified that pursuant to the Connecticut General Statutes and the town charter, the Board of Selectmen have removed the above item to on this call of this special town meeting for submission to the voters of the town who are qualified to vote at town meetings for yes or no vote by voting machine on the following question. Shall the town adopt the ordinance establishing the town of East Windsor Broadbrook Fire Department? Yes or no? I move the foregoing resolutions be adopted. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Were we just lose our second that motion? Motion has been made and seconded. We're now on the point of the uh, meeting where we can discuss the motion, but so we will not be voting on the motion this evening. That's going to be um, uh, forwarded to a vote on November 3rd. Is there discussion? Mr. Anderson, name and address, please. Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook, Connecticut. Um, okay. I've read over the proposed ordinance and uh, the only concern I have is we are creating another 2% problem. However, under the current circumstances, I would have to support this 100%. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there further discussion? I have a question. <clears throat> this is Ed Bowser from 5 Eastwood Drive. Go ahead, sir. Could you take a minute and a half and just give us an overview of this proposal? Uh, sure. Um, so the, the <clears throat> ordinance is available on the town website and in the town clerk's office. Um, attorney Andriana from Pullman and Comley was the attorney who represented uh, the, the town in our discussions with the Broadbrook Fire District. Um, and I'm going to ask Mike to do a walkthrough of that so that I don't miss any of the salient parts. But before I turn it over to Mike, I do want to just acknowledge the um, very collaborative nature of our conversations with the Broadbrook Fire Department leadership and thank them for their work. Attorney Andriana. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Andriana. I'm at Pullman and Comley. Um, so I will give you kind of a, a high overview of the ordinance. Um, to start with, I think, and we can all agree with this, the primary purpose of the ordinance and creating the fire department, the, the Broadbrook Fire Department, the way it's being proposed in the ordinance is to kind of alleviate uh, some of the, the tax inequity that's occurring in the town so that if this ordinance is approved at the end of the day uh, people living in the warehouse point fire district will pay for fire services from warehouse point and people living in what would be considered the broadbrook uh, territorial jurisdiction would pay the taxes for the fire services provided by the uh, broadbrook fire department um, we are not, this ordinance does not create a second fire district in the town. It creates a fire department, which is effectively an agency of the town. But this fire department will have its own board of fire commissioners. Uh, the way it's set up in the ordinance is a five member uh, board of Fire Commissioners with um, staggered elections over every three years. Uh, the Board of Fire Commissioners will be kind of the uh, operating body of the fire department. 
the intention is uh, presently and given how well things have worked so far is that the fire department would actually uh, contract with the Broadbrook Fire Department Inc, which is a separate kind of not-for-profit entity to provide fire services within Broadbrook, you know, very similar to what they're doing now. Uh, the other big uh, important point is that, I guess two things, one backing up, the ordinance itself, so the question that will be available to vote on at the November election, everyone that is a qualified voter votes on that, can vote on that ordinance for the creation of the ordinance. Once the ordinance is created, and if, assuming it's adopted, the annual budgets for the Broadbrook Fire Department would be voted on just by voters uh, within the territorial jurisdiction of, of Broadbrook. So, so the, the, origin, the initial ordinance will be voted on by everyone, but the annual budgets will be voted on by those voters living within Broadbrook. Um, those are kind of really some, some of the high points. I think a lot of the other sections in here uh, just deal with the conduct of the fire department and how the uh, fire department and the town work together. So, so that is, you know, a two minute overview of what the ordinance provides. Thank you. Really don't have any say. Uh, I'm sorry, name and address, please. Okay, so is, are there any other comments from uh, participants in the meeting? I see Mr. Stuckland's hand. Yeah, Fred Stuckland, 148 Winkler Road. And uh, the question is, uh, currently we don't have any ordinance in town to establish the Broadbrook Fire Department. Is, is, if this does not pass, what is the end result of the fire department's status? That's one question uh, I have. And then I guess the other question I have is, what is the ratio of voters between uh, the two districts, if, so that we get an idea of uh, where the where the voting uh, issues might come up on this? Thank you. So um, your first question, sir, pertained to what effectively what is our plan B? Um, as uh, I think everyone is well familiar, there have been a number of different ideas that have been um, tossed around over the last few years. Um, what the current composition of the Board of Selectmen is intending to do is um, to bring this to the voters at, a, at the presidential ballot in hopes that um, this solution uh, will be the one that, that hopefully will be adopted. Um, obviously, if that doesn't work, um, we'll have to decide, you know, what our, our next option is, but um, our, our collective, and I think if I'm not mistaken, our unanimous intent is for this to be the, the concept that's considered by voters. So we don't have a plan B at this point. We're really, um, we think that this is the best solution that is available to us. Um, that vote was unanimous, and we're hoping that um, the townspeople will agree. Um, there is no you know, snap of the fingers that's going to allow us to pivot to any other choice at the moment. Um, th this is a long drawn out onerous process. Um, a lot of time and conversation has gone into developing this potential solution. And um, if, if this isn't successful, uh, and I hope that it is, but if this isn't successful, then it's back to the drawing board for us. And, and at least we've eliminated one of the solutions that is a remedy available to us. So we would know not to try this again. We would try something else next. Um, but in terms of what that is, I mean, we all, I think, stand behind this is the best available solution for the town. Um, your second question pertains to, um, and I'm, I'm gonna ask you to clarify what you were getting at. I think, I think your question is the percentage of voters that live in the existing Warehouse Point uh, Fire District versus those that don't. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's what you're asking. Yes, that's correct. So the, the district line for the Warehouse Point Fire District and the voting places in town don't follow each other exactly, but they follow each other substantially close. 
Um, and so the two polling places are roughly 50-50 in terms of registered voters. Um, we're talking the difference of maybe 150 voters um, when all is said and done. It's, it's not a substantial difference between the district lines and the um, uh, registered voters. And the polling places are roughly cut to be the same size. Uh, I see Noreen and then Karen Goudreau. Noreen, name and address, please. Uh, hi, Noreen Farmer, 247 South Water Street, East Windsor. Um, I have a question relative to the capital expenditures <clears throat> for Broadbrook. Um, when they need fire trucks, if they need to improve a building, build a building, will those costs, those costs will go through the town side, but will the the expense for those be borne by the Broadbrook side of town as a separate issue. Um, and I bring it up because Warehouse Point is now going on a boat on Thursday night to possibly bond a fire truck and improvements. And um, I'm just curious how you're going to handle that part of it to ensure that there's not double tax, the double taxation issue coming up again about the Warehouse Point side bearing the expense of Broadbrook improvements and the Warehouse Point, Broadbrook's not. So I can, I can tell you that the intention certainly is to make the district, uh, to give the district the ability to self-fund itself. That would include um, capital projects. If there needs to be a specific answer to your question, I would ask Attorney Andriana to chime in. I mean, the only thing I would add, and I, I agree, Jason, I think we've all talked that the intent would be that any type of capital expenditures going forward, assuming that this, this ordinance is, is adopted, would be built into uh, the Broadbrook kind of annual budget. Now, the, the one thing I will point out, just so people are aware, that the distinction between the two is that the Warehouse Point Fire District under state law has the ability to uh, issue its, its own debt. Uh, the fire department would in all likelihood, if it was doing any type of large scale capital funding, say a fire truck, for example, might have to use the town's financing ability, but the budget, but the payments, the debt service on that would, I would assume would still be built into the Broadbrook Fire Department budget. Mike, just to follow up on that, I think there's another section in the draft ordinance that um, speaks to that concern in kind of a roundabout way. And it's the very last sentence in section seven of the draft, which says that any fire department budget surplus shall be segregated from the town budget funds and be used solely for the fire department purposes. Um, so they could, they could effectively fund yes. themselves over time um, by uh, using that, that surplus provision in section seven. That, that's very true. So if, if, if over time a surplus was built up substantial enough to buy pieces of fire equipment, they could, that would be used as well. And again, that surplus is effectively being funded by Broadbrook taxpayers. Um, I see uh, Karen Gaudreau followed by Jeff Kroll. Karen? Um, my concern is actually more on the timing of this referendum um, and dividing voters, registered voters from property owners um, property owners are not allowed to have full ballots and they're not allowed into the polling location. So that, that is a concern for both, both registrars. We both agree that the timing of this referendum is not the best um, and we would prefer to see it as a separate referendum. It's just a, a, a registrar voter concern. Sorry, Karen Godreau, 167 Depot Street. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. Goudreau. On that point, um, we, I have uh, spoken with each member of the Board of Selectmen and, and we agree that um, the benefits of having a, a public feedback on the question outweighs some of the logistical concerns. But I have offered that um, with 63 days to go before the election, we still have plenty of time to work out 
a system so that it's not overly burdensome on the folks who are running our elections. Um, not the least of which being that we have a new conference room that's available in the town hall um, that could be used as a place to segregate voters. And beyond that, we've also, um, we're looking into the question of whether um, a property owner with $1,000 of real property can actually vote on this question because it's a policy distinction versus a budgetary one. Um, and uh, Pullman and Conley is researching that to see if there is even a need to do that in this case. Um, if the determination is that there is, um, then we have options to make that, again, less, less onerous on you folks um, and <clears throat> time to figure out a pathway to do that. Thank you. Um, I saw uh, Jeff Kroll and then followed by uh, Bob Leach. Yeah, this is Jeff Kroll, 15 Laurel Circle. My question is, uh, well, I'll admit that I'm not sure why there's two separate districts, but why go ahead and create a new department? Why not create a town of East Windsor Fire Department and merge Broadbrook and Warehouse Point together? So the, the short answer to that uh, long question is that the Warehouse Point Fire District was established by a special act of the legislature. Um, there are a number of machinations that would be required in order to either disband that or expand that. And uh, while that's been a solution that's been talked about for a number of years, there uh, has not seemed to have been a consensus amongst the parties involved as to the best way to go about that. Um, so in the absence of that consensus between the parties involved, the selectmen looked to this as an option that was potentially palatable um, that we could at least ask the voters of the whole town about. Thank you. It's not as though that concept hasn't been considered and talked about for a number of years, um, but this seems to be the, the most likely solution to the problem. Um, I saw, I think Bob Leach was next. Bob Leach, 39 Church Street. Um, my question piggybacks along um, a previous question, and it goes to bonding and the other costs, uh, hidden costs of operating the fire departments. Um, what I would like to be sure of, uh, I, what I've heard from the attorney and from the first selectman is that it's the intent of this ordinance to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, we all know what good intentions lead to bad interpretation. So I would like to see this ordinance to include um, the definite uh, language about bonding for the fire department, uh, any large capital purchases, that should be definite language that's in this ordinance. Um, my other concern is to make sure that all the other hidden costs, such as insurance, costs for payroll, um, costs for building maintenance are also carved out and uh, applied solely to the Broadbrook Fire Department budget. If we're doing this as just an operating budget, then we're missing at least half of what the, the actual costs are to run the department. So to make it an apples to apples comparison, I would imagine that those items should be included in the ordinance language. Thank you, sir. So um, the answer, to, again, to reiterate the response to your first question, I think if you look in section seven, you'll see that your, your concerns are actually um, spelled out there, that there is a mechanism to ensure that that concern is met. Um, relevant to your second point, which is to make sure that we're separating out the full costs of the Broadbrook Fire Service, um, I can tell you what I will be asking the Board of Selectmen to do in the spring, um, assuming that this is adopted, and I, I'm going to ask the Board of Finance to follow suit. Um, um, excuse me, I'm ahead of myself. So if the ordinance is adopted in November, we will need to create an agreement between newly established uh, Town Fire Department and Town of East Windsor, which will en enumerate all of those things that you talked about, capturing the, the full cost is responsible for what all of that stuff. Um, but also to make sure that the, um, the true costs of running the Broadbrook Fire Department come out of the town's budget. Um, when I put together my budget recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, I am going to include all of those costs um, at the outset of that process, and those costs will remain there um, until just prior to the Board of Selectmen forwarding the budget onto the Board of Finance for their consideration. Um, at that point, those costs would be removed, thereby ensuring that we are really taking the money out of the town budget and having it be available for um, the Broadbrook Fire Department versus having that money get 
get dispersed as is what happened when the warehouse point district came out of the, the budget. Um, so we have thought about those things. We have a, a plan to follow through on that. Um, and I think it's the surest way of making sure that um, people are seeing the costs reallocated to this new funding source and not being just whacked again for, for more money for more services. That's the process that I intend to use in terms of developing the budget for the selectmen's consideration. Um, and I would ask the Board of Finance to follow suit just so that they can make sure um, that there is that level of transparency available to the general public. Okay, um, wouldn't it be simple enough to add that language to the ordinance rather than leave it up to interpretation for future boards of selectmen? Uh, not at this point, if we want to have it be on the presidential ballot. And the reason for that is because this is due to the Secretary of State in final form tomorrow. Um, so we are out of time to make any modifications to this. Um, I think that there, the points that you've raised are addressed. Um, could, could language be clearer? I think it could always be clearer. But um, in terms of trying to get something for the the voters and the presidential electorate to consider um, th this is the option. Okay, just just disappointed that it wasn't included in the language. You've had many weeks to decide this, but oh, leave it just as to it. be just to be clear, there is language in section seven that specifically talks about the budget will include personnel costs and capital expenditures. Yep. It's the second right, but, it, but it does not go to costs for building maintenance payroll costs or insurance costs, none of that's included. So without it written into the language, I, I, I'm still miffed that uh, we'll have this interpreted by future boards of selectmen. So I'll leave it at that. Look, Bob, it says it right in the second sentence of the first paragraph of section seven. So um, I saw I see Robert Fire's hand up, followed by Paul Anderson, followed by Fred Stuckland. So I'm guessing that's Tom Arcari, right? Chief Arcari, I just want to let uh, Bob know that our insurance is already included in our annual budget every year. You know, it's, it's, it sounds like he doesn't think that, you know, the town pays for it. The town doesn't pay for our budget from a separate item. It comes out of our operating budget every year. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. Now I saw uh, Paul Anderson followed by Fred Stuckland. Okay, Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook. Um, I have a, a statement and a question. So the statement is that what happens if this doesn't pass? The simple answer is everything stays the horrible way it is. Yep. Okay, the question is, is this going to be billed as a fire tax? Is it going to be part of our uh, annual tax bill or separate? Because I didn't see anything that clarified that in my mind. You mean, how is it actually going to look when you get the bill in the mail? Yeah, more or less, yeah. Or is that undetermined? Uh, it's going to look substantially similar to the way the warehouse point one looks because we're going to be using the same process for that. Okay, fair enough. Okay, um, Fred, I think is next, and I'm not yep. sure who after that. Fred Stucklin, uh, 148. Go ahead, sir. Fred, I, I can't hear you. I'm not sure if anyone else can hear you. I lost my guy. Okay, try that. Let's try that again. Not there. You're you're there now, but you have a bad signal, sir. Okay, it's got to be Cox then. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you all congratulate you all on your efforts in doing this. I think this is the right direction for the town to be going in. It's uh, it's working out properly. Hopefully it passes. 
the second question is, do the fire, Broadbrook Fire Department personnel become town employees? I, I believe the answer to that, sir, is no, but I would check with attorney Andriana. Uh, th that is true. They will not become town attorneys because effectively what the town is going to do is kind of hire out the fire services within Broadbrook to the existing Broadbrook Fire Department, Inc., which is a separate legal entity from the town. They become contractors effectively. Yes. Thank you. Um, Bonnie Yosky. Hi. Uh, sorry, I got in late. So let me see if I got this straight. When we go to vote, uh, is it just the people that are, that are in the Broadbrook district that is going to be voting on this ordinance? No, uh, it's an ordinance. So by charter, ordinances have to be adopted by the town meeting. We have recessed the town meeting to the November ballot. So it will be a town-wide uh, response to the town meeting question. I would any, re any registered voter will be able to vote on the question. There you so go. So Warehouse Point can basically decide what they want to do with Broadbrook if they vote. You could actually end up being a draw if, if you're as close as what we're saying we are. Well, that, that's assuming that, there, that there's diametric opposition to the question i think that's i think that's statistically unlikely yeah and, the, and and jason if i could add i just think a distinction there is yes the ordinance is voted on town-wide but the annual broadbrook fire department budgets right. are voted on strictly <clears throat> by voters residing in broadbrook the the, the broadbrook right. voters control kind of the the financial uh, purse strings of, of the fire department. Other comments from members of the town meeting? I'm just doing a quick scan because there's a number of people on here. I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Are there other comments from the town meeting? Jason, this yes, is sir. Frank Gowdy, 29 Pease Road. I'd like to congratulate you and, and your fellow selectmen on doing a, a real bang up job. I think uh, obviously you put in many, many, many hours of work with uh, the committee and with your attorneys. And I'm sure this is gonna pass and will be a better community for it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Other comments from members of the town meeting? Uh, James Barton. Hi, James Barton, 108 Main Street in uh, Warehouse Point. I'd just like to say thank you to the Board of Selectmen for finally taking this issue on and getting some kind of a resolution to the issue that's been going on for four years for the people of the fire district. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's hope this is the resolution. Um, <clears throat> For the third time, Paul Anderson. Okay, just a uh, housekeeping type of thing. Uh, when we opened this and, uh, and a moderator was elected, the only people talking were selectmen. If you're going to take a vote at a town meeting, doesn't everyone have to participate or be allowed to participate? Which means everybody would be unmuted or I don't know. I'm only asking, this is a unique circumstance. Well, everyone was allowed to vote and there was no roll call that was requested. It was a voice vote. No. There was no- not, not, not a roll call. Everybody would have to be unmuted to be able to vote. If we're everyone. all muted, which we are, we're all sitting here muted. You call for a vote and everybody's muted. Nobody's voting. No matter what we say, you don't hear it. So okay. we'd have to all unmute to be able to say something. That's correct. That's why you have a mute and an unmute button. And, and you unmuted that. yourself to vote, Paul. So, or to, to speak just now. Nobody no, is no, locked I from... No, no, no. I agree. 
but there was no timing to allow this and it wasn't explained. I'm just saying that you're gonna have another vote, right? You, somebody's gonna make a motion to adjourn at some point and there's gonna be a vote. Do people understand that if they don't unmute, they can't vote? That's all I'm saying. It's a kind of a procedural thing. So the, the what I consider to be the most important point there is um, that we're not actually going to vote to adjourn. We're going to vote to recess the town meeting. Uh, we're, uh, fair the enough. Meeting is going to vote. conclude on November third. That will be a I, vote. I, got it. Understood. I, I understand that. But any vote, everybody would have to be explained to be. This is a a unique circumstance. We've never had a town meeting like this before, and I'm just looking at the process. This is not a criticism. It's new. So I'm just looking for if people are going to vote yay or nay on whatever the issue is, they need to know it. They need to know how, because I don't think that took place. Oh, I agree. Um, I, I'm not going to lie, Paul, you got me stumped on this. Attorney Andrew, I, I, is there an issue here and is there a remedy to it? No, I, I think, I think, and I understand Paul's point and it's, it's, a, it's a valid point. Maybe on the motion to recess, I don't know, Jason, and I am not a technological whiz. Do you, at the time of the vote, do you have the ability to unmute everyone? I believe the answer to that is yes. Okay, so maybe when we get there, uh, I think the discussion, the way it worked is fine. People can raise their hands, but at the vote, maybe the idea would be because of the timing is just to unmute everyone and then we can still have a voice vote, you know, yay and nay. Um, I see Bonnie Yasky's hand. Bonnie for the second time. Yes. Uh just so I can be clear, did you take a vote whether to, to send this to a town meeting already? Because if so, I must have missed it. The rescission or the, the recessing of the vote to town meeting was included in the warning. The selectmen have the authority to do that under the uh, general statutes and under the town charter. And we exercised that right on the, I think it was the last week. 20, 21st or 20th, 20th, I believe. August 20th. Yep. Any other comments to come before the town meeting? Cool. Nicole Vasilla, 53 Prospect Hill Drive. I agree with Paul. Uh, just the way that it, it all took place, um, you were, you called it. Uh, you were nominated, there was like 30 seconds for people to respond, and then boom, you're moderator. So I understand where he's, I, I understand procedurally the way it went down is correct, but I also understand Paul's point of view where it was very, very fast, it was not explained very clearly, and I can see the confusion. Thank you. Any other comments from the town meeting? Jason Noreen Farmer, is yes, it possible when you do the res the res the um, to recess this to where it's got to go to, um, in order to make sure that nobody has a problem like unmuting or whatnot? Can we use the reaction button and go person by person and yay or nay or um, you know just to avoid any problems with people unmuting or not being able to be heard or you know, it's kind of like a hands up, hands down sort of thing. Uh, this is Frank Gowdy again. I, I would think that anyone that's participating as we are right now would know how to unmute or how to mute because they are muted or they're not. So uh, I, I, I don't see a real problem, but perhaps, and believe me, I'm not uh, the, the most illiterate tech guy in the world. When we get to the point where we're ready to vote to recess, I will unmute everybody. I would just ask that if there's ambient noise in the background, that's that's going to be very difficult to overcome. So if you could just have your backgrounds as quiet as possible when we get to that point, that would be helpful. 
Other comments from the town meeting? Yeah, Fred. Mr. Stuckman. Just, just a quick comment uh, on the voting process. Uh, uh, I think Bonnie pointed out that the show of hands from a procedural standpoint might be a better approach simply because you'll be able to count the number of hands. If there's a, a tie between yeas and nays, at least you'll have a count. If you have the everybody unmuted, it's going to be a problem understanding what the count is. So a show of hands from a procedural standpoint might be a better way of going. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure that everybody has a camera, but Mr. Leach. Considering there's only 25 people in attendance, maybe 26, um, maybe you could just call the roll uh, by name and get it done with that way. I, I think that's a great idea. Just maybe, maybe somebody's in their pajamas or maybe they don't have any clothes on. But I think, <laughs> you know, I think maybe uh, just uh, give your name and your vote would be fine. Frank, did you have anybody in mind when you made that comment or, you know, is that, is that subliminal in some way? No comment. <laughs> Other comments? really difficult to follow that up so no. yeah <laughs> it's so i don't know who iphone is i don't we'll give this a whirl um are there any other comments on the question Motion would be in order to recess the town meeting to November 3rd. Selectman Nordell, so moved. Is there a second? Noreen Farmer, second. Motion has been made and seconded. The question is on recessing the town meeting to November 3rd. Um, Selectman Baker. Aye. Noreen. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Bonnie Yoski. Abstain. Ed Bowser. Aye. Marie's iPhone. Aye. Uh, Rich Austin. Aye. Aye. Deborah Nordell. Austin. Karen Goudreau. Aye. Peg Hoffman. Yes, sir. Aye. Thank you, Peg. Tom? Aye. Nicole Vasilla. Aye. Rachel Safford. Aye. Chris Ruos. Aye. Bob Leach. Aye. Um, Broadbrook Fire. Aye. 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 That was Tom Markeri, Jerry Bancroft, and Jimmy Bancroft. Uh, Fred Stuckland. Aye. iPhone. James Barton. Aye. Geraldine Corso. Aye. Paul Anderson. Aye, and I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> Yeah. Is there anyone who did not vote? Because everybody moves around when somebody signs off. Sarah uh, Muska, aye. Sorry, Sarah. It's okay. Frank Gowdy, yay or aye. Are there any others who have not voted? 
The town meeting is uh, recessed until November 3rd. Um, being that there is no other business to, be, to come before us, we're finished for the night at 8.15. Thank you.